Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Mr. Romero. I'm the third, fourth, and fifth grade instructor at Third Street Community Center, which is right there. Uh, I'm here back with another video. Today is Monday. Today I am excited to bring to you a new topic. We're going to be talking about Cornell notes. Cornell notes. You may know what it is. You may not know what it is. Um, but I'm here today to introduce you to what it is and and the what are what are Cornell notes? What are the benefits to taking Cornell notes? And where I got introduced to it first, right? Uh, which is a program called Avid, Avid which I'll be ex talking about that later. Um, but yeah, let's jump into this video, and I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about Cornell Notes. You may be asking, what are Cornell Notes? Cornell Notes is a tool that people use to take notes during a lecture. So when your teacher is talking during a math lesson, during a science lesson, um, during a history lesson, you take notes. You may be asking yourself, okay, how do you take notes? Well, we're about to go through that in a little bit. But before that, we're going to talk about the benefits of taking Cornell notes. So you are able to review any notes that you might have forgotten, right? So in class, if your teacher is talking about science and the different chemicals and different chemical properties, you'd write that down in your Cornell notes. And when you get home, if you don't remember what those chemical properties were, you can go back to your notes and see where you were talking about chemical properties, right? So those, that's, a, that's a benefit. You're able to go back and review your notes. You are able to write down questions and get them answered. So maybe sometimes during class, you don't really get it, right? You don't really understand. But you have a question, but you can't really, you know, ask your question right away you just write it down you write it down in your notes and then raise your hand when you're allowed to and ask that question and then on the notes write your answer so you're able to get your questions answered and then overall you're able to go back and review and see what you learned what you jot jotted down what your questions were and those are the benefits to taking Cornell notes Right, so now I'm going to talk about the template. The template about uh, the template on Cornell Notes. So, this is a template right here. Um, I remember for Forever, there's a different template, which is right here. This is the, the template for Avid, but I will get to that soon. Right now, I just want to go to the simple one. Uh, where is it? Sorry. Right now, I'm going to go to this simple one. Keep in mind, you don't need this paper specifically printed out and writing notes. Maybe when you're in class, they'll give it to you. But if you just have your notebook, write down, write down your name on a corner on the top right. Write your name, the class, the date. And if you're in a period, write down your period. If you're not, simply leave it alone. And then you're going to write about the topic, okay? So if it's on science, math, literature, you're going to write it right here at the very top. So if you have your notebook, write it at the very top. Now, on the left side of your paper, you're going to put questions, main ideas, right? And then on the right side, you'll put your notes. This is where you're going to take all your notes, and your questions go here. Now, at the very bottom, it has a summary, reflection, and analysis. Here. You're going to write about what you learned overall on your whole notes and your questions, right? For example, if you, know, you may ask, what is a chemical property? And you're going to write, chemical property is a substance in the periodic table, right? Um, so then you write down, today I learned about chemical properties and what they are. And then you... You know, two to three sentences is fine. After that, you have your notes. This is how to take Cornell notes. It's pretty simple. It's nothing, nothing uh, too complicated. I think you guys are very able, capable of doing it. Anyone's capable of doing this. This is very beneficial. Even I use it in college. 
And then I'll show you an example of how it is and how people write them. Okay, so let me go to this one. Let me go down here. So this is an example, right? Example one. So they left their name, the class, and their date, and the period blank. It's okay. So then here it is, the topic, right? So for them, for them they, learn, they were learning about propaganda techniques and advertising. So they had their questions. You can write one, two, three. What is the definition of propaganda? And then, you know, if you're not able to, to ask that question during the time that your teacher's teaching, it's okay. Just raise your hand and ask when you are able to. And then write down propaganda messages intend to persuade audiences and adopt a certain opinion, right? So you write the answer. And then, so it's usually like that. You write your question, and then your answer goes next to it. Your question, and then your answer. You don't want to have your question here, and then your answer all the way at the bottom, right? Because that's not being organized. And then at the end of the day, at the end, sorry, at the end, you're able to write a summary, right? It's not that long. It's one, two sentences, two to three sentences, like I said. And this person wrote, advertisers use propaganda to sell products. There are four common propaganda techniques used by advertisers. And there you go. Simple as that. Nothing complicated. You're able to write your whole notes, you know, the topic, and take it home and review it. So now let's look at another example. Example number two. So in this example, this example is a little bit different, but it's still a little bit different format, but it's still the same. Right, you have your name, class, period, and date. So student A, English A, period three, and then the date. Class notes, this doesn't really matter. You won't really get this unless you have that template, but don't worry about this too much. And here's the topic, you write your topic, you have your questions, and you have your notes, right? Or main ideas, right? So main idea here is not a question, right? This is a main idea. Define irony. Irony is a contradiction between what is expected and reality, right? So they, have, they write the main idea, and then they write the answer. They have a question here. What is characterization? Characterization is the way an author describes a character, right? So then they write maybe main ideas and then the notes. At the end, if I can zoom it in a little bit. Let me zoom it in. Uh, they write their summary. It's two to three sentences. And then, yeah, let me show you example number three. Uh, actually, yes. Actually, let me show you the AVID example. So this is an AVID example. If you're ever an AVID in, you know, for say, when you go to middle school, if you have the chance to join AVID, it's a class you take throughout your whole middle school year and throughout your whole high school year. You'll be with the same people each year. It's really beneficial. Beneficial. I will talk about that later at the end of the video. So let's review their notes because this is how I got introduced. Sorry. This is how I, I got introduced to them. All right. Okay. So here they, so here's the template, right? Here's the template for that we had, which is your name, class, period, and date, your topic, your questions, and then your notes. Here they did it on a math. They wrote notes on math. Yes, you can write notes in math. So they wrote a question, or actually they wrote main idea, which is standard form slope. And they wrote the formula for slope. Right? And then slope intercept form slope. And they wrote the, the formula for intercept form slope. Right? And so that's what they do. You just write main ideas or questions and you write the answer next to it. For example, right here, how do you graph a slope? Graphing. Plot y intercepts. Number two, follow slopes. Number three, connect line. Right? So it's, it's nice as you can see here. When they wrote this answer, they 
organized it really well with step one, two, and three. Right? So when you're taking notes, make sure you label maybe numbers, right? So you're, you're, so you're able to follow steps. And at the end of the day, summary, right? Today in class, we learned the standard form, AX plus BY equals C, the slope intercept form, Y equals MX plus B, and what a slope is, rise over run. We also learned that when graphing, you, put, you plot the Y first and follow the slope, right? So it's pretty simple. It's nothing, hopefully, too complicated to follow. Let me shrink this. Sorry, let me shrink this. Okay, so here let's take a look at another one. So they have their name, their class, their date, topic, essential question. So this is something new. This is something about what you want to learn throughout this, this topic, right? So their topic was identify significant literacy devices that define a writer's style and used to interpret work. Now, their essential question was, how does Lanston Hughes Huggis' poem, Mother to Son, advise the reader to overcome difficulty and keep from giving up in life? So here, they wrote a question that they are going to get answered later throughout the, the lecture. And so, here they wrote the questions, their notes, as you can see, they wrote the question and then the notes, the question and then the notes. All right. This can either be given to you by the teacher or you can write it yourself. And then at the end of the day, they wrote a summary. Okay. So that's a little bit about what take, taking Cornell notes is in the format. And hopefully you are able to use this not only in, you know, middle school, high school, and college. But even maybe during a small little lecture at home or through the TV that you see, right? For example, now, you can take notes on Cornell Notes, <laughs> right? So you can practice. If you want to go back and do that, that's fine. So now I'm getting close to the end of the video, and I'm going to talk about what is Avid because I think this program is great. Because I got introduced to it. Uh, so I joined this program in middle school. It's Advancement via Individual Determination. AVID. Proven Achievement law, Lifelong Advantage. For this, I joined it because I didn't really know much about the college system. You know, I really didn't know what really was college in a way. I was in middle school. Um had an idea, but I wasn't too sure, so I wanted to know more about it. So I joined this program called Avid, and they actually introduced me more to colleges, right? We went on college tours. We went to go visit different colleges around California. Um, and then I began learning more and more, and that's where they taught me how to take Cornell notes, which is amazing because I am able to use them here in college. And so are you. You can use them in middle school, elementary school. That would really benefit you. If you're starting now, that would very benefit you. That would benefit you so much in middle school, high school, and college. Um, so if your middle school has it, join it. If it doesn't, it's okay. Most likely your high school does. It's a great program. Um, but, yeah, and that's today's last day. I know it was pretty short, but it's okay. Hope you guys learned a lot. I will catch you guys again next week with another lesson. Stay safe. See you till next week.